Welcome back to Site Tech Inner Mountain, SiteWorks training videos. In this video, I wanted to show you an update that came out in 1.73 for SiteWorks that came out that actually allows you to change a point from either a surface or a feature depending on how you actually recorded it in the first place. Let's say you um, recorded a point right off the bat and all of you know that it defaults uh, that point to a surface. Um, sometimes you get that blue and black square on the screen. I'll show you here in just a sec. And you're like, oh man, it's your coverage grid. You can turn the coverage grid off, but if you wanted to change that back to a feature point, I'll show you how to edit that and change it. It's a new feature or vice versa. Let's say you shot points as features or a line string is a feature, but you were intending to do an actual um, infield design. I'll show you how you can actually change those without having to go into Kogo and redraw a line over it as a break line or reshoot your points. You can simply touch and edit those points and actually change them. So let's go ahead and show you that. I've got a couple just kind of makeshift um, hole points on the ground out here for water valves and manholes. And then I'll show you if you're to do a quick infill design, how if you did it the wrong line string, you can change that. All right, so with a work order that I've got open, I've got just a quick little road design right here. If you go into the roller stuck in the mud to your measure type, you'll notice right there, like I was telling you, that you've instantly got what's called a point type that's on surface, and you can change it to feature. So let's say right here I've got some water valves, and I actually wanted to shoot these, and I put in water valve, and down here I change this to no for ask me every time, but I didn't notice that it's actually on surface. Honestly, it depends on what you're doing with the data in the long run. If you do it as a surface, it's not the end of the world. It's still a northern easting elevation, but you get that coverage grid if it's turned on that black or blue square. So I'll go ahead and hit accept on that, but I'll leave it on surface. So if I come here and hit enter, as soon as I hit enter, you'll see that you've got a blue square on the screen. Sometimes they're black and you're like, okay, what is that crap? I don't know if I need that. You come over here and you shoot another water valve you got the same thing. And then over here, you got the same thing, right? So you got all these squares on the screen. Well, if you do it that way and you don't really care about changing the type, if you go into your gear on the right side here, under the measure tab at the top, there's coverage grid. If you just turn coverage grid off, that is one way to get rid of that on the icon on the screen, those um, blue and black screen or squares. But let's say you wanted to edit those. If you zoom in on them, you can see that they're actually a dot, but they're solid, meaning there's no void in the middle. If you touch and hold on the one that you want where it's water valve 2, there's an edit data option right there. In here is where you'd normally edit the elevation and all that stuff, but right here at the top there's a measure type. You can simply change it between surface and feature. So I can make that a feature, hit save, go back out, and now you'll notice that the other two are solid in the middle and that one's not. So there is the ability, if it's shot as a surface and you didn't want it to be a surface, you can actually change it to a feature. But let's say that I actually wanted it to be a feature or a surface and I actually shot it the other way around. Same thing. If you go in here into your roller stuck in the mud and this was on feature and I shot a point right here. Now, if I move off of it, you can see that it's solid. Same thing. You have the ability to touch and hold on it and simply just go into edit data right there and you can change it to a surface. So one cool thing there, if you've done it either way, just understanding your coverage grid and then understanding how to deal with those points. The other one where I think this would be really helpful is I know that infill designs are becoming more and more popular. They are for us in our area and we have people that are brand new to using SiteWorks and we show them how to do the, the job, they go all the way around the project and forgot that they were doing it as a line string and it needed to be an actual break line in order for the data collector to make a surface out of it. Business center, you can do it different. Let's say you did that or you did a boundary and you did the break line around the outside, but you shot some surface or points in the middle, but you did them as features and not surfaces. This is where I think this feature would really help. But even a line string, if I go into line, and I'll just call this EOP just for example out here, and I accidentally did this as a line. If I went ahead and shot actually some points right here, and I was gonna make an infill design right here, I'll just make maybe a square box. And I shot all the way to here. And if I made kind of a rectangle here, I can square it out. Let's say it was a huge project and you shot it all. Yeah, you can go into Kogo 
and you can redraw a break line over those. But if it was something relatively small like this, and you're like, oh man, I actually forgot, and that's not a break line, you can simply touch and hold on the actual point. So when you touch there, it says line or point. If you go to that point, you can do the same thing and actually edit that from a feature to a surface point. Save it, and you could go around. It may be a little labor intensive if it's a massive project, so that's where Kogo might be better if there's a lot of them. But just for these four points, I can simply go make those surface points real quick. And then I'll come around and hit my very last one. So I'm actually editing the et data on that. So there, go ahead, make those all surfaces. Um, same thing in the middle. I'm just kind of trying to show you guys. Let's say you actually had a middle point right there and you had shot that as um, an actual point right here and it was the high point and you did it accidentally as a feature. You shot it and then realized, oh no, my gosh, it needed to be a, a, a surface point. You don't have to redo it. Just simply touch and hold on it and go in here and edit that data. Feature to surface. It's a done deal. So you can do the actual points or the points on a line. Then if you were to make an infill design out of it, go to your menu, go to data management, surfaces design. We'll just call this the infield. I always like to include my line work personally, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. And it's the only thing on my work order. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use outermost points. And now I can simply go in and just to show you, to prove to you that it actually made a surface out of it. I'll just go into my designs and I have infield right there. So I still have the work order open that shows the lines, but I have the design line also. But now I actually have a surface. You can see I've got cut fill. And if I move it over to the 3D slicer view here. So if I zoom in on it, you can see that it actually truly did convert it and it made it to where the data collector itself would make a surface out of it. So there we go. It's just part of 1.73 and it's the ability to change the points. So Hopefully this helps from Site Tech Inner Mountain. The difference between changing points or line string points in between a surface point and a feature point. Thanks for watching.